welcome to today's lecture the sixth lecture on wool the today's topic is impurities and quality factors of wool that is i am going to discuss different kind of impurities coming with the wool when we are getting it from the sheep or other animals by shearing and different aspect of those impurities little bit in details and the second part is the factors affecting the quality of wool or factors influencing the quality of wool that is the animal factor or genetics aspect the nutritional factor or feeding aspect and the environmental aspect all these thing affect the quality of wool we are going to discuss in this lecture today wool impurities so as i mentioned there are different kind of impurities which comes naturally with the wool after shearing so they can be of three category that is natural impurities acquired impurities and applied impurities natural impurities is mostly the grease and the sweat so this is coming from the sebaceous gland the oily secretion and from the sweat is from sweat gland so sometime they will be together like a dust and other soils and salts along with a large amount of different kind of fatty acids and alcohols and the second category acquired impurities this is acquired by the animal while growing in the process in interaction with the environment so they could be mostly dung dust along with different kind of plant parts like grasses flowers buds leaves all these thing together sometime they are called as bars and the third category applied impurities these are applied for the animal husbandry practices different kind of paints for identification different kind of medicine applied outside tar etc which are they are present in the wool and they are the third category we are going to discuss more details about them in the next source of impurities as i mentioned here i am going to tell more details specifically about the different origin of the different kind of impurities so first one natural that can be fibrous that is black wool or kames or shorter they get mixed with the pure wool then the secretion as i mentioned that is the grease from the sudoriferous gland and soot mainly from the sweat gland but they remains together and then the excretions that is the physiological excretions like urine dung shorter scouring all these thing also can be there as a natural impurities the second is the acquired impurities where again it can be animal origin like lice skids mites removed by carding then vegetable origin like bar grass twig straw carbonizing agents and the third category is the mineral that is sand dust willowing scouring etc and the third category is applied stain as i mentioned different kind of stains are used for identification of the sheep in the animal husbandry practices like deep tar paint shorter etc so these are the different sources of impurities here we will see the mean impurities of wool that is the on an average how much impurities are expected in wool so raw wool contains a large quantity of impurities on an average it could be up to 35% by mass so here is i am going to tell a mean values that is the average values of different impurities actually they can range in a very variable which i am going to tell in a details in a next table so on an average grease about 15% sand and dirt that is 10% soot that is the uh, sweat gland secretion along with some salts and etc that is around 8% and the vegetable matter around 2% that includes different kind of buds flowers leaves etc sometimes they are called twigs or bars so in an, another table i am going to see we are going to see different range values for these kind of impurities once again about the impurities of wool that is here i am going to tell the different types of wool and their impurities different kinds in a range so in case of fine wool see grease or soot together it is 20 to 50 percent whereas in medium 15 to 30 cross bred 5 to 15 carpet wool 5 to 15 so we are seeing that when the wool is fine the grease and soot is more and when it becomes coarse the grease and soot is less 
then in case of sand and dirt these are the picked up sand and dust etc along with dung sometime so this is again 5 to 40 in fine wool in medium 5 to 20 in cross bread 5 to 10 in carpet 5 to 20 so it is again almost in the same range except in fine wool then vegetable matters as i said it will be around 1 to 5 percent in the range it is given there then the moisture that is the how much water remain with the normal wool before any processing raw wool or just after searing so this is almost similar in all category about 8 to 12 percent and the wool fiber that is the actual fiber will wool content which is mostly the cortex or carotene content that is around 20 to 50 percent in fine wool and then slowly it is increasing with the higher diameter because of the lower content of grease and soot so in medium 40 to 60 in crossbred 60 to 80 in carpet 60 to 80 and in hair 60 to 80. Now we will discuss about the wool fat or grease or wax. These are this is actually the natural impurities coming from the animal. So these three terms are synonymous used to describe the fatty product obtained from wool. So grease is one of the natural impurities of wool fiber. The sebaceous glands of the sheep secrete complex mixture of esters formed by combinations of several variety of alcohols, cholesterol and some 30 different fatty acids. So this fix, mixture is collectively known as wool grease. So in continuation about the grease, wool grease also called as wax can also be defined as that fraction of raw fleece which is water insoluble because this is a fatty substance it is not soluble in water so that part is called as grease the fatty secretions in wool are actually wax rather than fat since the esters comprising it contains no glycerin in combination with fatty acids so when we say normal fats or lipids it is always made up of fatty acids as a ester with the glycerin molecule but here there is no such glycerin so truly they are not fat that's why they should be called as wax it is a secretion of a sebaceous gland and does the purpose of protecting the fiber from mechanical and chemical damage on sheep's body so this grease has got very important role by for protecting the actual wool fiber and it prevents any mechanical and chemical damage on the fiber and on the body of the sheep in continuation about the grease this wool grease is comprised principally of high molecular weight esters formed from a mixture of sterols and aliphatic alcohols with straight and branched chain fatty acids. Five different sterols, six different isosterols and small amount of hydrocarbons have been isolated from this grease. The sterols are of great importance in pharmaceutical application. So some of these sterols are used in pharmaceutical and one of the most important product is lanolin which is isolated from this grease or wax and which has got a lot of pharmaceutical application. One of the important sterol is cholesterol found relatively in large quantity in wool grease. Now we will discuss another natural impurity that is soot. Soot is also one of the natural impurities of wool. The sweat glands secrete potassium salt of various fatty acids together with small quantities of sulfates, phosphates and nitrogenous material collectively known as soot. So that potassium salt is sometimes is the actually soaps. It is a secretion of sudoriferous gland or sweat gland present on sheep skin which along with wax does the purpose of protecting the fiber from mechanical and chemical damages on sheep's body. It is the dried residue of the secretion of the sudoriferous or sweat glands. So little more we are going to see in the next about the soot. 
in continuous and to sort the aqueous extract contains sweat and water soluble phytochemical degradation product containing nitrogen and sulfur sort consists in part of a mixture of potassium soaps of fatty acids ranging from valeric to palmitic acids soot can also be defined as that part of raw fleece which is insoluble in water the principal component of soot is always potassium carbonate about 70 to 80% the amount of soot ranges from 2 to 15% so far i was discussing about the impurities of wool now we are in the second part of today's lecture that is the factors influencing the wool quality the factors affecting wool growth and quality in sheep are broadly divided into two categories one is the genetic factors that is the germplasm which has a control over the wool growth and different other physiological mechanisms and the second category of factors are the environmental factors which can be into two aspect one is the nutritional environmental factors another is the non nutritional environmental factors so we are going to discuss little bit more details about these different aspects or factors which influence the wool quality in the next few slides so once again factors influencing quality of wool maintenance of the size and productivity of the flock of sheep depends upon the amount and quality of feed supply so as we can understand the the amount and quality of feed plays a very important role on the productivity of the animals and in this case in the growth and quality of the wool this in turn affects the production per head and the quality of wool because of malnutrition sheep remains stunted and cannot express its full hereditary potential of wool production so as we can understand if their nutritional quality is not good automatically it will affect the growth naturally if we it will affect the productivity in this case especially about the wool production or wool growth or wool quality so in continuation about the factors influencing the wool quality so here it is about the genetic factors genetically superior sheep for wool production do not tend to be bigger sheep do not eat more feed per unit live weight do not have a more effective digestion system and do not have a different metabolic rate rather they tend to be more efficient converters of feed to wool so this is most important it is the the good quality germplasm or genetically superior sheep produces better quality wool because of their efficiency of converting feed to wool so we can say feed conversion efficiency in this case when we talk normally about the growth etc here we can see the role of feed in the wool growth we can find a relation in this curves wool growth and feed intake in the upwards we can see the clean dry wool growth gram per day and in the horizontally we can see the feed intake as gram per day so here we can see mainly two carb or graph one is the uh, reddish one or orange one which is the related to genetically high producer and the bottom one greenish that is the genetically low producer here we can see that as the feed intake is increasing the dry wool growth also increasing in the orange one you can see the the amount of wool growth is increasing with the feed intake from 500 to 1000 to 1500 g per day whereas in case of genetically low producer though the feed intake is increasing it is not that much increasing towards the higher level of wool growth so this is the relation between feed intake and wool growth depending on the genetic quality of the sheep here we will see the effect of metabolism on wool growth that is the whole body metabolism so number one is the cystin 
Cysteine is a very important amino acid, sulfur containing amino acid. There are some more sulfur containing amino acid which has got very important role in the wool growth. So cysteine metabolism, when it is good, there will be better fleece or wool. And when the cysteine metabolism is poor, then there will be less uh, wool growth, etc. Then endocrinology, that is different kind of hormones, has important role in the body metabolism. In this case, thyroxine is most important, which has got very important role in the metabolic process. And also it has an influence on the growth of wool fiber and the quality of wool. And the third is the metabolites. Different metabolites produced in the body like urea, acetate, lactate, glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant mechanism in the body against the uh, oxidative uh, molecules or free radicals. So these, all, these metabolites also has got a very important role in the growth or quality of wool fiber. Now we will see the role of environment. So there is two kind of environment. One is the external environment that is outside the body and the other one is internal environment that is inside the body. So in the external environment, we can see three element. One is the climate, second is the soil and then the feed. So these three are interconnected. In case of climate, the light, temperature, humidity, rain and wind. These are the components which has got influence on the soil and other things like slope, structure, fertility and hydrology. So these climate factors has influence on the soil which has got indirectly impact on the feeds and fodder. So in case of feed there is pasture, nutrient balance, acceptability, supplements and water. So these three things together has got an influence on the physiology and growth of the animal and thereby it influences the growth of wool fiber and the quality of the fibers. So as I said, the sheep's internal environment, that is the animal factors, that has got a lot of role in the growth and quality of wool fiber. There we have three aspects. One is the behavior, another is the physiological state, another is the health. In the behavior part, there is walking, chewing, competition, stressors and flocking. So these are the individual behavior. If some animal is overactive or undergoing some competitions or some other kind of stressors and some hormones and other flocking, how many animals are kept together, all these things have an impact on the behavior of the animal and that will lead to some kind of physiological state or, or normal physiological state like pregnancy, lactation, age, weight loss, full wool or obsears. So these are the factors related to physiology which has got impact on the growth and quality of wool fiber. And thirdly about the health. It could be affected by pathogens or toxins, secondary chemicals which may affect the health or some paint, rope, wear, chemicals and parasites. Parasites are very very common in case of sheep which can affect their health and cause stress. So all these internal environment factors can affect the growth of wool and quality of wool. Here we will see the effects of different proteins on wool growth. That is the kind of protein given through the feed has got important role in the wool growth. An experiment was conducted with five different kind of proteins that is casein, egg protein, gluten, gelatin and zein. So casein and egg protein are highly balanced with all essential amino acids. Egg protein is one of the best protein. Then gluten is having cysteine deficiency. Gelatin is deficient in many of the essential amino acids. And zein, it is highly deficient in lysine. So with this experiment, they have checked the wool growth relative to the casein. In comparison to casein, it has been compared. And we can see from this graph, the growth is even better in case of egg protein. Gluten, it has heavily reduced. And in case of gelatin, very much, very, very less growth. And in case of zein, that is almost negative growth. So this proves that the quality of feed or quality of protein is very, very important. Protein should be able to supply all the essential amino acids for proper growth and quality of the wool fiber. 
Here once again we will see the effect of some important amino acids. Some of the amino acids, particularly the sulfur containing amino acids are very very important for wool growth and the most important is the cysteine. Cysteine is the fast limiting amino acid for wool growth. Even other sulfur containing amino acid like methionine and some more are also important. There are so many details experiments conducted about the growth and quality of wool fiber, but we will not go to that much details. So this is the last one. Here this graph is showing the supplement of cysteine, cysteine post ruminal supply, direct supply after the ruminal part that is gram per day is given and the wool growth was measured correspondingly gram per day and from the growth curve we can see that maximum wool growth is achieved at approximately 3 to 3.5 gram per day of L cysteine that is the highest amount of growth so cysteine is very very important for the growth and quality of wool because it is a major source of sulfur containing amino acid. So now we are at the end of today's lecture. I will just summarize. So today we have discussed two topic. First part about the impurities of wool. There we have discussed different kind of impurities, natural and acquired immunity impurities and little bit of details about the grease and soot mostly. And some more impurities are like vegetable matters, bars, etc. which are used for grading and classification of wool. And in the second part, we have discussed about the factors influencing the quality of wool. In this, we have the genetic factors, nutritional factors, and environmental factors. So genetic factors, how it is influencing the growth of wool, we have seen. And the environmental factors like the climatic conditions, soil, etc. has an influence. And the feed related aspect, that is the quality of feed and the different kind of amino acids, how it influences the quality of wool. So I hope this is clear today. With this we are finishing the major part of the wool lessons. Now next lesson we will start about the processing of wool maybe one or two lecture. With that we will finish the wool part. Thank you.